Welcome to this tutorial on MPS Permanent Magnet Motor PMM, safety equipment. PMMs have many performance, application and CO2 saving benefits over conventional induction motors. They do however bring risks that have to be managed. PMMs generate voltage when rotated by the pump. Today we are going to introduce the MPS PMM monitor equipment, which is central to managing these risks in PMM systems. First, however, we'll say more about the PMM voltage generation and introduce the MPS 3 P's of safety. So, what is the problem? Permanent magnet and induction ESP installations look the same, except that PMMs always generate voltage when rotating. Rotation can and does occur during run-in hole pull out of hole and maintenance when the motor is not being driven by surface power. Motor rotation is caused by fluid flowing through the pump for many reasons. Backspin, well kicks, tubing plug was pulled or failed, kill fluid is dumped. The fundamental issue is worker electrical safety when handling the motor cable which can be unexpectedly energised. Unless this is understood, the PMM installer or operator can potentially suffer electrocution when handling the electrical cable. MPS has proven practical safe procedures to manage the risk of using PMMs in all situations. We established the three P's framework for this. A brief summary is Prepare Pre-job planning with the operator to review the proposed completion and the PMM procedures. Prevent. Try to prevent rotation, for example, kill fluid. And protect. And above all, protect personnel from electrical injury at the point of working. This is where the MPS PM motor monitor comes into play. Consult MPS for more information and training on the three Ps. MPS has invested heavily to address PMM electrical safety developing patented equipment and methodologies for safe cable handling, connections, splicing, testing and monitoring to manage the risk of installing and commissioning a PMM system. Let us now look at the MPS PM motor monitor equipment in detail. So how does the MPS PM motor monitor protect personnel? It eliminates voltage at the point of working, for example, during spooler operations and cable splicing. It continuously monitors for rotation. Stop and investigate. Do not continue working when the motor is generating voltage. The MPS PM motor monitor solves these requirements and many more. For example, real-time current, frequency and resistance measurements, site-wide motor rotation alarm, OMS downhole gauge test in situ. There is no need to disconnect the cable to make these tests. These intervention-free features increase the operational efficiency during run-in hole and pull-out-of-hole operations, while at the same time keeping the motor cable shorted and grounded, safe and monitored at all times. The PM motor monitor, together with a number of accessories, comes in a water and shockproof case. These are the basic tools required for safe operations. The motor monitor kit comes with integrated three foot long connection leads, insulation piercing clamps for use when cable splicing, an insulated inline connector for making downhole cable connections on the cable spooler for run in hole and pull out of hole operations. Two sets of batteries, monitor mounting and cable connection accessories, an MPS mag monitor gauge communication cable, and finally, the user manual. The instrument is housed in a rigid metal enclosure rated to IP65. The weight is about 12 pounds. There is a sounder, multiple LEDs and two push buttons on the front panel used for operation and indication purposes. 
The indicators and controls are as follows. A 90 decibel alarm sounder and blue sunlight readable LED for alarm indication. An on off button and power indicator which also indicates battery level. A select button to choose between different operation modes which also doubles as a mute button to temporarily silence the alarm sounder when necessary. At the bottom of the box, above the four output cables, there are four LED indicators showing open circuit or rotation conditions for the particular phase leg or ground. A green light suggests normal safe operation, whereas a red light suggests a fault or a warning. On the left hand side of the monitor we have two battery holders, a gauge decoder communication port for downhole test instrumentation, an RS-485 Modbus interface where data collection and control can be made, two communication ports for optional accessories, for example, an RF dongle for the remote beacon tower and a communication port for a computer utility where data measurements can be obtained. And there is a test pin required for the self-test function of the monitor unit before use. On the back of the monitor, a mounting bracket is supplied as standard. There are a number of nut insert fixings available on the bracket, so the unit can be secured with bolts or ferrite pot magnetic feet. On the side of the mounting bracket, there are two 2-inch two slots that allow the unit to be secured with two ratchet straps. Several optional accessories are available for use with a PM motor monitor. A computer utility is available for data collection, recording for example, motor status and resistance. A remote wireless beacon RF dongle is also available. This is used to duplicate the visual and audible alarms from the monitor unit. The remote beacon tower can be placed nearer to the actual work area where safety monitoring is required. The beacon tower has brighter indicator lamps and a much louder adjustable siren up to 110 decibels for a reliable indication at a further distance. The mounting bracket is designed for cable drum mounting which can be used in run-in hole or pull-out of hole operations. The monitor can be mounted inside the cable drum with the front panel facing outward. There are three main applications for the motor monitor unit. Cable splicing when joining a downhole motor cable to the lower pigtail penetrator cable. Run-in hole and pull out of hole operations. The monitor can be installed inside the rotating cable drum to provide operational monitoring and protection. Two types of cable connection accessories are supplied in the motor monitor kit for each specific purpose. Switching on the device for the first time. A momentary press on the green on off button is required to switch on the PM motor monitor. The device will boot up and then test cycle through each of the front panel LED indicators followed by the alarm sounds. Check that all of the LED indicators illuminate. Notice that some of the LEDs have multiple colours for specific purposes, so please refer to the user manual for full information. Once the boot up cycle is complete, the device will enter monitor mode by default, and if a motor is not connected to the device, the alarm will sound. This is due to an open circuit being detected on all phases, which is completely normal during setup where a motor is not connected. Before using the device for motor monitoring, always test the unit using its built-in test facility. Hold the select button for 3 seconds to enter the self-test mode. The green test LED will illuminate when the test mode is selected. All four bottom row LEDs, phase A, B, C and ground, will turn solid red indicating that the phase cables are awaiting verification. One at a time, touch each of the phase leads and then the ground lead to the test pin on the left hand side of the monitor unit. After contact with the test pin, the appropriate LED phase indicator will turn from red to green, indicating a successful continuity and current measurement test for each lead. Confirm that all four phase indicator LEDs have turned green. The test is now complete. Now you can hold the select button for three seconds again to return to monitor mode, or switch off the device and connect it to a motor. 
During setup, if any phase is open circuit, the alarm on the monitor unit will sound. Users can mute or unmute the alarm sounder temporarily by pressing the select button for one second. When the sounder is muted, the red mute LED indicator will turn on. It is important to note that hot gloves must be worn when making or removing cable connections from the PM motor monitor. However, for the purposes of clarity, hot gloves are not used in the following video. Before making the motor cable connections, it is important to always connect the ground lead first to a clean local ground terminal. Once the connection is made, check the continuity with a multimeter. There are a number of accessories available to help with ground connections in different situations. For this demonstration, we will be connecting the motor cables using the insulation piercing clamps. In the field, however, inline connectors are normally used at the spooler because the piercing clamps may become loose in a rotating spooler. Loosely locate the piercing clamp over the phase wire. Tighten until the pin is in contact with the copper conductor, then tighten a further quarter turn. Repeat the same process for the remaining two phases. Once the connections are made, we are ready to switch on the monitor unit. As a reminder, test the unit, securely attach the ground lead to a clean local ground terminal and verify the connection with a multimeter. Using hot gloves, attach the three phase leads. Once the connections are made, hot gloves are not necessary during the monitoring and operating process because the motor terminals are now shorted within the monitor unit and have a zero voltage potential across the terminals. Let's have a quick look at our system under test. In this setup, we have a PM456 series motor coupled to a dynamometer. The monitor unit is connected to the motor via a 4,500 foot downhole cable. There is a remote beacon tower also installed for this demonstration. Before switching on the monitor, connect any optional monitoring instruments to suit. For example, a downhole gauge tester and a remote beacon transmitter. When you're ready, switch on the monitor. Also, if the option is connected, switch on the remote beacon tower. On the screen, you can see the remote monitor utility from the PC. Open circuit detection. As an example, we are disconnecting the phase A terminal. When the terminal becomes open circuit, the alarm will sound on the monitor and you will see the phase A LED on the bottom left of the unit turn red, indicating a fault has occurred. Also in the event of a fault, the optional remote beacon will show a solid red light and a continuous alarm. The phase resistance measurement will also be displayed by the optional remote monitor utility available on the computer. Upon a fault event, the user should first check that the clamps are installed properly. Ultimately, the fault event suggests a downhole open circuit fault on the particular phase leg which must be immediately investigated. It is important that hot gloves should always be worn when working on the motor terminals. Also note that as a safety feature, the alarm will continue for three seconds after the fault condition is cleared. Motor rotation detection. When motor rotation is detected, one or more of the motor phase LEDs on the bottom of the monitor will blink red and the alarm will sound. The faster the motor is rotating, the quicker the LEDs will blink. With the remote monitor utility, you can also observe the accurate frequency and current measurements displayed on the PC or smartphone screen. As the blinking indication is a rotation warning, 
If running in or pulling out of hole, the installer should slow down. It is important not to work on the motor system wiring during the rotation warning due to the generated voltages from the rotating motor. Ground fault detection. The PM motor monitor unit is also able to give a ground fault warning. For this demonstration, we have shorted a phase leg to ground with a test lead. This is to simulate the effect of a downhole ground fault in the cable or in the motor itself. The unit is capable of detecting a ground fault during motor rotation. Upon motor rotation, an extra LED on the unit labelled ground will blink red to indicate a ground fault. Immediate investigation of the downhole installation is now required to identify the source of the fault. Let's repeat the monitor indication once again. Downhole gauge testing. OMS downhole gauge monitoring can be carried out in situ with a PM motor monitor. Switch on the gauge commissioning panel. The PM motor monitor automatically detects the gauge commissioning panel and switches into remote mode. This opens the phase to ground connection inside the monitor and allows the downhole gauge measurement to be obtained through the monitor. During downhole gauge testing, the motor rotation and phase continuity are continually monitored. If a rotation is detected, the monitor will bypass the gauge testing, fall back into monitor mode immediately and reapply the connection from phase to ground, therefore making the circuit safe. When the rotation has stopped, the motor unit reverts back to remote mode automatically, where the downhole measurement can be resumed. Let's repeat the motor monitor indication once again. There are a number of supporting documents with detailed in-depth steps for using the PM motor monitor for a particular purpose. Speak to your local representative for further details or email us on sales at magneticpumpingsolutions.com. Thank you for watching and go home safely.